Hello and welcome to my talk today on posture and pain. My name is uh, Ben Thompson. I'm an osteopath and a rehabilitation specialist in Chiang Mai. Um, I work uh, at Chiang Mai Osteopathy. You can find me, find me on Facebook there. Um, uh, an osteopath, for those that don't know, uh, specializes in looking at uh, uh, posture as well as um, treating uh, pain. So typically a patient would come in uh, expressing uh, pain either in the back or the arms or anywhere in the body and my job would be to assess and uh, look at where the pain may be coming from and looking at uh, their lifestyle to see if uh, it adds to, uh, to the problem. And then obviously I try and diagnose it best I can and give them advice and treatment uh, to reduce the pain. Um, I've been asked to talk today uh, about uh, the topic of, of sort of wellness in the workplace and I thought I'd focus on these two particular uh, aspects of, of what you might experience um, when you are at work. Um, so without further ado, let's get started. So uh, I'll start with the learning objectives today, which may be a bit ambitious to cover everything, but as they say, you know, if I had more time, I would uh, make it uh, a lot more succinct and uh, clearer. Um, but I will attempt today to try and cover all of these topics. What is posture and why do we care so much about it? What is pain? And why should I have an active lifestyle? Okay. Along the way, I'd also like to bust a few myths, which uh, you know I hope makes it a bit interesting and uh, make food for thought, really. Um, so the first one being, my back pain is due to my poor posture while sitting in front of the computer. Uh, number two, if I have good posture, then I won't get back pain. Um, number three, my MRI scan shows me that I have a disc bulge in my spine, and that is the source of my pain. Um, these are very generalized statements, and so as you can imagine, um, it's not always so straightforward, uh, which I will uh, cover as we, we go through the talk today. Um, okay. So to start off with, I thought I'd look at posture, which I think is something we don't really think too much about um, until we obviously get back pain, get hit with back pain or neck pain or uh, some related pain. Um, and back pain, unfortunately, probably affects, you know, 90% of the population, of the adult population, I mean. Um, and at some point in your life, you may get back pain. Uh, and unfortunately, a lot of times people say, oh, well, welcome to the club. You're getting old. And, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's just seen as a rite of passage almost. Um, but that doesn't have to be the case. Uh, and one of the most important things is to try and understand um, how the pain has sort of developed, let's say, if you've had back pain for some time. Um, and one of my jobs is to try and obviously uh, reduce pain before it becomes sort of chronic or try and help to understand uh, with patients why they, they are in uh, so much pain where they are. So posture is the way our body holds itself in a certain position. That's very understandable. Good posture means that your body position places the least amount of strain on muscles, tendons, ligaments and joints. Um, and that just means that you don't spend uh, all your time in, in one position, for example, uh, because that just puts strain on the muscles that are holding you up. So as long as you keep moving, it doesn't really matter too much about what position you're deciding to sit in, uh, because movement will help ease the tension and strain going through a certain point in your your joint for example good muscle tone can help to maintain good posture that is very true um, so if you've got for example you know good core uh, stability um, which 
you may hear a lot in physical therapy um, or uh, physical training, personal training, um, when, when you go to the gym, uh, good core strength, um, absolutely that does help to, uh, to maintain you know, that, that good posture, but also reduce the tension going through. Um, and uh, you may have seen this before, these sort of different types of posture. Uh, the good posture being that of, of sort of balanced upright, straight. Poor posture being sort of a flat back or forward head, rounded shoulders, uh, what we call a sway back or weak abdominal muscles there. Uh, these are, again, just very generalized uh, uh, statements. And um, I see a lot of this uh, at work in my, my uh, practice. And some people, unfortunately, their bodies, their, their skeletal structure is the way it is, is that, that they just have to work on uh, muscular, muscular development um, as opposed to trying to change any um, skeletal element because they have either a scoliosis or a curve in their spine and uh, they can't, you know, sit up straight as, as the good posture picture shows because their, their spine is a little bit kyphotic or, or curved in, in their upper back. And so with conditions like that, you, you really do need to work on uh, being active and, and moving about at work. Um, so I'm sort of pitching, setting this up and pitching it in a way that, yes, there are generalizations as to how we are, but when it comes to pain itself, it's a little bit more complex than that um, because some people that have poor posture don't have uh, the suspected pain that you imagine. Okay. So what is poor posture? Poor posture, um, as we've seen in the photo previous there, uh, can unfortunately increase the wear and tear um, on the joints. Um, so let's say it's 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 sort of you know you've you've got a weak point in your neck or in your back and if if you adopt poor posture as in you just let your shoulders slouch forwards now this is nothing to do with your skeleton being um rounded for example if if you just naturally you know you don't try and sit up tall then of course you know there is a lot more pressure in 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 your chest area for example uh, so poor posture, if you're in the seated position, can compress onto the lungs and make them less efficient. Um, so this is really important when it comes to lung capacity. And uh, you may have heard of sort of breathing techniques before or, you know, uh, learning to sit up tall, pushing your chest out. That helps to bring in oxygen and uh, open up the, the chest area so that, you know, you're not as tight. Um, when your lungs are sort of compressed, they're not sort of working hard because, um, sorry, they, they have to work a bit harder uh, because your diaphragm isn't able to kind of work to its full capacity because everything's all, you know, crunched up to the front like that. Um, and that can have knock-on effects on your um, physical health even um, by putting stress on, on your on your um, your your upper back, for example. Um, research has linked poor posture to tension headaches, for example, as well as back pain. Um, so that's what I mean by that sort of seated position. One thing to note, though, as a caveat here, that it's not the exclusive case, as I've come back to, um, that poor posture isn't the only cause of your back pain. And this is very important to be aware of. Your posture influences your emotional state. Now, there are several YouTube uh, talks, uh, sorry, TED talks on YouTube that um, that address this uh, aspect of mental well-being and how you present yourself and how you, uh, you know, you, you present your posture. If you sit up tall and straight, um, you demonstrate a lot more confidence, particularly if you go to meetings. Um, and these are these are all important aspects and factors of, of uh, uh, working in the working environment. Um, I've attached a uh, comic strip here from uh, Peanuts. Um, you may have come across Charlie Brown before. 
he says, uh, this is my depressed stance. Uh, when you're depressed, it makes a lot of difference on how you stand. The worst thing you can do is straighten up and hold your head high because then you'll start to feel better. If you're going to get any joy out of being depressed, you've got to stand like this. <laughs> so, as you may know, Charlie Brown is always a bit, uh, bit grumpy and, uh, or rather, just a bit depressed. <laughs> okay. Okay, and uh, here's a comic strip of a, a nursing home in post-texting world. I again borrowed from the internet from Bizarro Comics. Uh, hopefully, we don't all end up like that. Um, I've attached a slide here on ergonomic posture. Uh, you may have heard of ergonomics before. It's it's essentially uh, um, workplace assessment uh, that that some of you may have um, if you work in an office or for a company. Uh, sometimes they can they can come and check you uh, to prevent essentially um, back pain and, and things like that. So this is the easiest thing to do is make sure that. You know your workforce aren't sitting in a in a, in a bad posture or uh, hunched over, and so you can either sit or stand, and they're the two options that you have at work to to kind of keep moving. My advice would always be to just sort of uh, keep keep it interesting and shift and change. Make sure that the monitor is always the right height, um, and the seat is always uh, a good height, um, and if not then keep moving. So change from sitting to standing or standing to sitting. And that movement will help um, keep your body uh, mobile and, and not put strain through one position. So that sort of takes me on to, to pain um, because uh, obviously when we're in pain, we then start to assess, you know, why am I here and what's happened to me? Um, is it have I been sitting at work for too long? Or uh, Sometimes it just comes on. Uh, you wake up in the morning and, and you're in a lot of pain. and You may have had a, a stressful work week. Um, or you may have just reached over and picked something up off the ground. And all of a sudden, uh, pain is that warning sign all of a sudden that, that, you know, ah, don't move the back. Okay. Um, so what is pain? Um, Pain is your brain telling you it thinks something is dangerous. Steve Haynes. Uh, Steve is a uh, chiropractor, I believe, um, who is a fantastic uh, educator as well and wrote a book on um, pain is really strange, um, which I've referenced throughout this talk as well as at the end of the talk. Um, I use this a lot as a, as a, as a tool to help guide my patients, uh, particularly if they are sufferers of, of chronic pain or chronic back pain. Um, uh, the book really goes through some fantastic illustrations of, of how pain is more than just a physical uh, damage or a change, but it's also up here in the mind and, and how we, we operate on day, day to day. Uh, when we're in pain, the brain is, is sort of telling us that, no, I don't want to do that or that action hurts your back and we'll come across more of this concept a bit later. Pain is at a very fundamental level all about your brain's assessment of safety. Unsafe things hurt. If your brain thinks you're safe, pain goes down. So the typical thing would be you've hurt your back and it's a sort of sharp shooting pain and you may have a bit of sciatica, a pinched nerve feeling and it's going down your leg and anything that you do is going to hurt in your back um, and that's because the brain does not want you to move at all. The brain isn't very good at uh, differentiating whereabouts in the back your pain is coming from. Yes, you can point to it specifically maybe, but there are usually more than one areas that have, have been affected by, by that, uh, that pain process. So all your muscles in your back will tighten up and, and, and you'll feel like you just, you just absolutely cannot get out of your seat when that happens. Um, I'm sure some of you have experienced back pain at work before. And it's important that we um, look at this topic because it comes to low back pain is, is something that is a leading cause of, of, of loss of work, absence, and activity limitation. 
um, throughout the world, um, and you can find plenty of uh, studies on this. Um, in fact, the WHO is one of their big key areas is looking at uh, is back pain um, because it affects so many people in all different fields, but particularly more so if if you're working at a, an office or a desk um, sitting all the time. Particularly with this pandemic that we've we've gone. Uh, we've come through or I'm still going through a lot of people are working from home and really shifted their sedentary uh, lifestyle even more so because there's no uh, opportunity to commute um, which is great for some but commuting in some ways is, is helpful because you, you're forced to move about at least in the day um, so where are we here Okay, so I'd just like to just t touch on the topic of the pain pathway um, because I think this is really important to understand. When you're in pain um, and uh, you look at it from the sort of very mechanical uh, model, um, you may see this kind of image that comes up that uh, you've got tissue damage and that tissue damage affects uh, a certain part of your back and and, and your brain says, ah, it's, 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 don't move, and, and everything ceases up. And this, from a very biomechanical model, we see that, um, you know, the brain is often sending signals of inflammation, uh, and all sorts of things are going on. And that's important to understand when, when we're dealing in medicine, because we can take uh, medication, such as opioids, um, to help modulate pain, um, so anti-inflammatories um, or painkillers, for example, um, those things will help to uh, control the pain to a certain degree. I say to a certain degree because I deal a lot with chronic pain. Um, and again, going back to Steve's um, great book on pain is really strange, there's more to pain than just the biomechanical um, model. And, and this is really, really important when it comes to people that are long uh, back pain sufferers, for example. Um, when you've got many inputs in our body, in our brain, sorry, there's, there's threat, um, there may be trauma, there may be damage, but there's also psychology involved with, oh, I've had this pain before and um, I know what it's like, it's, it's gonna be terrible. Uh, the output that we have is, is things like uh, we've got inflammation, we, we've got some pain, but we also can maybe feel tired, we can feel stressed out, and we can also have dissociation from, from what's going on um, in our bodies. And it's much, more, much more complex than what we've always um, appreciated, unfortunately. So like pain, these complex outputs to protect are good in the short term, but bad in the long term. Now this is really important for someone like me that I'm often dealing with this reoccurrence of, of back pain in, in the office. Now I'd just like to show you this uh, picture here which is an MRI of the spine of the lumbar spine which is your lower back. Um, some of you may have seen this before uh, in terms of like you've had back pain and your doctor sends you off to have an MRI just to find out exactly where your your problem is coming from. So you may see here um, when I move the mouse about that uh, at this level of L5, S1 um, and even a little bit in the L4, L5 region that you've got a bit of wear and tear and perhaps a little bit of a disc bulge and uh, I think this isn't actually impinging on any nerves so the nerves you see are actually the black black lines here um, uh, but that may be a source of your pain. It may surprise you to, to, to learn that um, MRIs are not great uh, at telling you exactly where your pain is coming from because pain and mechanical tissue is, is, is never as, as straightforward as we'd like it to be. If you MRI'd um, a large majority of the population, um, you may absolutely see this same kind of image, uh, but the individual is not in any pain. So that doesn't explain to us why, um, you know, the, if, if, if you have this kind of bulging, that you must be in pain. Um, and that's quite an important uh, thing to take home 
as a message because um, often we, you know, we get told that okay, I've got this disc issue, and and yes, it may be helpful because it it may help you understand that you've got pain coming from from a part of your back, but you've got to be able to take that information and 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 uh, and understand that. It's not going to be like this forever, okay? So with exercise and an active lifestyle, you can absolutely have an impact on 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 your pain uh, appreciation, um, and and this is important because we don't want to catastrophize. Catastrophization is something that happens too often, where we we see an image that that is like oh it's 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 there it's it's angry. And uh, our brain remembers these experiences, and pain is something that really does stick in the mind, uh, and it can prevent us from trying to get back to our normal uh, mobility and movements, and it can limit our uh, active lifestyle. So that's kind of what I really want to want to emphasize with this. Um, New Scientist magazine, and I take this very seriously because. Um, this was back in 2019. This edition of the New Scientist called Bad Back. There's a back pain epidemic. I happened to come across this article that specifically talks about this, that um, people say they can tell you what is wrong from a scan. They can't. It's not possible, particularly when it comes to pain. And this is actually written in The, uh, in the, the Lancet um, by uh, an author called... Uh, uh, Buckbinder, Dr. Buckbinder, um, which I also reference in this talk. So some of that I've already spoken about, the truth about pain from acute to chronic. Acute pain changes how the nervous and immune systems work. Okay, so this is really important. The change amplifies and becomes entrenched and you get this sensitization of tissues. Now, this is kind of where we're going with the, the, the concept that when when you have pain, all of a sudden your your, your tissues in that area, the, the the skin, everything becomes like super sensitive. Um, so it only takes a little thing to kind of trigger it off. Uh, essentially, your alarm system goes wrong um, when sensitization takes place because sensitization means we turn up the volume on our alarm system, but we are very poor at turning down the volume. So now, let's say I've, I've just had a, a lower back pain episode, my, pe my back really hurts, and anything I do is, is going to trigger off you know, that pain in my lower back, um, even though perhaps the last time I had pain, you know, acute pain was a few days ago, but the lingering kind of uh, memory of, of how bad that was is going to stick stay with me for some time and this is this is something they've done numerous studies on um, in the human body um, back in the day they even doctors even removed parts of your nervous system to to just try and reduce chronic pain and patients would actually still feel this uh, this this concept of pain there's something also called phantom limb pain, which, which some of you may have come across or heard before, where an individual has, uh, has, uh, has a, a part of them um, amputated, for example, and they, they still, patients still can feel the, 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 the sensation where they had pain in their hand, even though their hand has been amputated and is no longer there. Um, sensitization is a really big thing uh, that your brain goes through these changes. And I'm basically putting this out there so that you can, you know, look some some of the stuff up yourselves uh, because it's, it, 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 you know, for chronic pain patients, this is really, really quite an important aspect of your your rehabilitation. Um, neuroplasticity, and this is the name of the game. Again, there are lots of um, videos on YouTube you can look up about this. So how do we go from this, essentially, to this? Okay. Um, neuroplasticity is the ability of the brain to reorganize itself uh, both in structure and how it functions um, and the key to relearning your pain experience so when you you are 
sort of recovering from your episode of back pain, let's say, um, you'll be anxious not to sort of repeat the same movements that you think caused your pain before. And your brain is, is already wired, because this is what it is, in, in a certain way that it thinks, okay, this is, this is how I move and this is what causes my pain. Um, but it's a lot more complex than that. You can actually rewire parts of your, 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 your brain um, by encouraging certain movements as long as you feel safe, as long as the brain is feeling that it's safe to do. And this can be done with the help of an um, uh, expert, such as a, a physical therapist, a chiropractor, or an osteopath such as me, or a, a movement specialist, or kinesiotherapist, I think. Um, there's, there's plenty of um, therapists that, that work in this area um, that can help Patients get back to their movement and retrain that movement so that they're not fearful of it anymore. And uh, neuroplasticity is, is essentially this concept of, of, of what we're trying to change um, when we are recovering and doing rehab. So, after all of that long uh, talk about uh, of, of pain and, and, and uh, how we how posture may be leading to pain. We now talk about understanding the problem and changing your uh, changing one's lifestyle. Now, this is really quite key to my talk. Your pain is only a warning sign that you need to make lifestyle changes. Okay, and this is really important to try and get in there before um, your pain becomes uh, uh, problematic, um, particularly for those that spend all day working and sitting in front of a computer. It's not just the, the posture now. We, we need to start living an active lifestyle. So we need to have habit forming changes. Um, and this requires a driving force. So one thing may be, oh, I don't want to be in pain anymore. So I need to start being more active. Uh, another one is, uh, I don't want to have to keep spending money or taking medication on uh, opioids or analgesics or non-steroidal anti-inflammatories um, so I need to live a healthier lifestyle and some of the things that we can do for this is create more time in our daily life um, time can be created nobody's stuck in front of the computer for you know 24 hours uh, incorporate exercise and movement into the workplace let's say you really can't get away from your desk um, you need to find a way that perhaps you can uh, sit on an exercise ball and bounce up and down, um, you know, instead of sitting sedentary. Take consistent breaks, involve movement, so go to the coffee machine at, you know, several times perhaps. You also need accountability um, if you want to have habits changing. And accountability can be either in the form of, you know, a diary, you, you write, you know, how often you move or how often you don't move, um, or a friend at work or somebody that can help sort of make sure that you keep 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 at it and then of course there's the reward for change um, once you start leading an act more active lifestyle you'll feel better your body will feel better your mood your psychology um, you may even have more time to socialize uh, and, and that's that's really important in in our work lives and lifestyle changes will result in reducing tissue sensitivity and this I can almost say with certainty, I've seen in almost every case that I've worked with people, um, you know, you come in for treatment, we get you moving about, we give you some exercise to do. And the key thing is at the end of the day, there's only so much I can do for you in the clinic or, or anybody, um, but changing your lifestyle will have long lasting effects. Okay, so in summary, after that very long-winded talk going all over the place. I do apologize um, if it sounded a bit boring and a bit confusing. But I just want to cover this topic. My back pain is due to my poor posture while sitting in front of the computer. And this is going back to that myth I wanted to bust earlier on. That uh, not necessarily 
poor, due to poor posture or just poor posture. Our bodies adapt to stress and we are not machines. And this is a really important part of, of understanding that your lifestyle, when you change it, you know, you will have physical changes from that. Um, when you do have pain, the structural damage could have only been a precursor and poor posture has only increased your sensitivity to that. So poor posture is only one aspect of, of many things that are going on in, in your body um, when you do come to have pain. Okay, uh, And back pain is also due to a lack of movement. Yes, we've discussed this uh, uh, several times throughout the slides. Um, that uh, again, uh, when you're not moving about enough, um, you're more likely to adopt a repetitive strain and possibly poor posture, uh, causing that uh, pain. If I have good posture, then I won't get back pain. Again, unfortunately, this isn't uh, a, a true statement on its own. Um, yes, it's, it's a helpful part of the pro uh, process, but back pain has been shown to be related to work family life imbalance, exposure to a hostile work environment, um, perhaps, hopefully not in your case, uh, job insecurities, long work hours and certain occupation groups. Um, yes, it's, it's, it's a multifaceted, multifactorial uh, uh, problem. Um, stress is a huge aspect of increasing um, sensitivity. Uh, let's say you've had an episode of back pain before and you've managed to conquer it. Um, but then work life becomes really stressful and your body starts pumping out more um, cortisol, um, your stress increases, uh, inflammation will then increase and then that can increase the sensitivity in your back and then you're back into this cycle of, of pain again. Okay, so life stress is a big factor, that's a take home message there. And this was the third um, myth that I wanted to try and bust. My MRI scan shows me that I have a disc bulge in my spine, and that is the source of my pain. It is one possible source, and that's kind of what I want to underline here, uh, because I deal with, unfortunately in my job, I suppose, uh, patients that haven't been able to get the relief um, from uh, maybe going to a standard hospital visit and getting your bag of non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, they've seen the expert, and the doctor tells you to go and see the physical therapist, do some exercise, and if that hasn't worked, then, you know, maybe have to do uh, spinal surgery. And and I'm one of the guys that ends up seeing people as a last resort before they go under the knife, and, you know, I do my utmost best to, to try and educate patients about um, uh, pain and uh, to understand the pain because the more you understand the pain and that it's not just that biomechanical problem, the better you have a grip on uh, how to rehabilitate uh, and, and get back on your feet essentially. And then that was the, uh, the statement I said about people say they can't tell you what is wrong from the scan, they can't, it's not possible. Uh, and you can read the article in The Lancet um, which is a very well respected medical journal um, about uh, uh, the Lancet has a series on back pain. It's very interesting to read, um, and uh, and hopefully it's insightful on on some of your journeys uh, through all of this. So that's a, a very convoluted uh, whistle stop tour on what I tried to uh, cover on uh, posture and and pain. These are the references here. Thank you very much for listening. Um, I do apologize if I've... Um, I just want to keep everyone... Uh, wish everyone an active uh, lifestyle and that, that uh, if you, you keep uh, bouncing on your pogo stick, as this gentleman is doing here, or keep active, rather, um, hopefully you'll be able to, to get to grips with... with uh, you know, strain in your back or, or any kind of pain. If you're unsure about anything, I highly recommend speaking to an expert. 
uh, on movement or even uh, your physical therapist or your a personal trainer who has uh, experience with working with people with back pain um, or an osteopath like myself or a chiropractor um, or, or something or somebody that that deals with with back pain on a regular basis okay thank you very much Uh, let me give a brief introduction. Dr. Ben is a UK-trained professional at British College of Osteopathic Medicine. He's a registered osteo uh, osteopath with a successful practice in Chiang Mai. All right, so he has a Chiang Mai facility, you know, that deals with osteopathy. It's a system of assessing, diagnosing, and treatment of and preventing a wide range of health problems. So it is commonly used for chronic back pain relief which i think we are all very familiar with so he has an academic qualification in human biology university of st andrews and medical education at king's college also in london bioethics and pharmaceutical economics and epidemiology and public health in university of cambridge so without further ado let me give the mic to dr ben thompson yes good morning doc Good morning. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Everyone. Um, I'm not really sure how to uh, to begin. Really, is it is it um, a sort of question answer session about? Yes, the, the it, it, there are there are a couple of questions, but I'd like you to just uh, give us like uh, if you if you uh, if you'd indulge us a little background like uh, about posture and pain, a, a little summary of what yeah. you had talked about. Sure. Um, so. I suppose just on reflection on the talk that I gave, um, I was trying to make it obviously slightly different and interesting, uh, different take on perhaps the kind of um, general advice you often get given that, you know, you should have good posture when you're working um, and, you know, this is good posture and, you know, this is bad posture. Um, and I think one of the things I wanted to hit home is the importance, obviously, of physical activity and staying active more so than just the posture problem. Um, and, you know, absolutely there's, 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 there's many ways to, to look at uh, back pain and pain as well. Um, and often the, something that I didn't talk enough about in my uh, discussion was actually the biopsychosocial model of health, which is um, the biology is the mechanics of our body, um, the psychology, and the social aspect uh, of, of how we interpret um, also our well-being. Uh, and so this is, this is a topic that often kind of gets a bit sidelined in um, when we go to the doctor about pain, we've got back pain and we're often given uh, a diagnosis that you've got um, you know, a, a, a degeneration of your back or something. And, mm -hmm. Basically, anybody over the age of 30 will start to have um, degeneration in your back. And I've seen many x-rays of individuals that have had, you look at their backs and you think, there's no way they could be walking around and they, it looks so crooked. But, you know, and, and people do. And, and, you know, and so it's, it's, it's not this direct sort of, you know, we see an image and this is your, therefore, that's the problem. Um, mm -hmm. That's part of the problem, but it's, it's, it's much more... Uh, complex than that when we're dealing with chronic pain, which is what I, I often deal with um, a lot. And I've seen people through episodes where they're able to sort of manage their pain um, because they're less stressed and they've, they've got all their ducks lined up in life um, and they've managed to get control of things. But then years later, you know, the, the pain problem comes back again and they're wondering why kind of thing. And then we try and explore a little bit about the stress in their lives and we find out there's, there's still still other issues go underlying that kind of can increase the potential of having pain. Yes. So, uh, I'd like I'd like to, that you mentioned the bio uh, psychosocial, right? Yeah, bio psychosocial, yeah. the biology, the psychology and the sociology of the whole thing. In your talk, something that really hits me was that you mentioned that pain is also by the brain. The brain is the one that's yeah. sending signals that, that it is unsafe for us. That's mm -hmm. why it sends pain pain triggers, right? Yeah. Now, do you think like rehabilitation can also be helped by 
like mental conditioning? Absolutely. I mean, this is this is such it's such a big factor um, in modern life that that um, and I think uh, some of the other speakers have already mentioned about um, psychological well-being through COVID. Um, fantastic talks um, earlier, uh, and and it's 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 something that that isn't emphasized enough until we're in pain and, and once we're in pain it's it's a little bit uh too late or we've we've started to go down the catastrophe route of like oh no my my uh, my problem is at my back and it's at this point and you know uh how do i deal with it um and often we go and see a medical practitioner and which is good they get the expert advice but it's it's usually okay um, you need to take these painkillers and then you go and see physical therapy, hopefully. Not always. I've seen a lot of patients that haven't been sent to physical therapy after they've, they've had pain and they're just left with it. It'll get better. It will get better. And it does. It gets better, absolutely. But it's not actually hitting the, the, the problem uh, early enough, which is actually you need to sort everything out in your life as well. And you realize that pain is, is intertwined with, with your stress levels. It's, it's so, it's when I start digging with people sometimes, like you say, well, what's, what else is going on in your life? You know, and unfortunately I have to be kind of nosy with my job a little bit, just, just to try and coax people to tell me, you know, all your uh, niggling things that are going on at home. You don't need to give too much detail, but when I find out, oh, actually, you know, you know, once that stress is gone, you'll be able to move forwards with, um, with the rehab as well. So, that's a really uh, important element of the uh, the process of rehabilitation, I find. Um, so yeah, so that the biopsychosocial model is something that um, we as osteopaths and other alternative um, complementary healthcare practitioners will will really uh, try and approach the patient first in that sense. Um, obviously, there's there's not that doesn't always work, but it's it's mm -hmm. it's an important part. Yeah. So it's part of that one. No, in 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 the case of like you know when we got hit by the pandemic last year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I hope you won't mind me asking. Have you seen an increase of patient going yeah, to your place? Absolutely. Because they everybody's working from home. Yeah, huge, huge, huge increase. I mean, it's funny. I felt really bad because in the sense that pe pe people are like, oh yeah, we're struggling through um, pandemic, not enough work and this, and I'm like, I've got too much work like I can't believe how much work is coming through the top <laughs> and, it's, and it's awful because, you know I, 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 my goal in life is not to see you again, like it, I really say, yeah. people, like, I only want to see you once or twice, give me three sessions and I, I'll I hope to get you to a point where you don't need to come back and, you know, you've got to go and do your physical therapy and activity and stuff and push people away. But yeah, it's, 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 it's a little bit because of, because of the pandemic, pe people have been mm -hmm. stressed, but also sitting in front of yes. the longer yeah, hours. Stress, yeah. stress and working from home really contributes a lot. No, I was really surprised when you mentioned that at the age of 30, human, I mean, us, biologically starts to you, you you're surprised yourself seeing x-rays of like the spine how could this person be still walking with <laughs> this type of x-ray now my question really is this i'm hitting i'm hitting the golden numbers <laughs> probably i'm hitting the golden numbers is there a path for the generation like let us say you you hit it like in your 40s mid 40s was is is there a path that you can go back to where at least manageable and you don't feel any pain at all on your back uh yes i mean uh, there is i've i've had plenty of uh, of of good cases and uh, this is another funny thing unfortunately i usually hear more about the cases that don't work so well and i always get the cases that are like the extreme cases and the good cases they never tell me what the uh, you know oh yeah it was great and then they disappear <laughs> so but actually <laughs> I have a lot of good good stories about you know you get a bit of a tweak in your back and then you change your lifestyle a little bit and you start to understand the the stress and the pain a bit better and you you make you take action to to uh, to to cope with that and you have a positive outset mindset as well about um, how you're going to deal with your pain that's that's a really really key key aspect of it um, yeah. I usually like the, the the story that I give to to a lot of my patients. That 
Andy Murray, you know, top tennis player. Unfortunately, he had to retire uh, for a while due to back pain. It was so bad. But if you looked at his early MRIs um, and you think, gosh, this guy was playing at top level tennis and you think, you know, they, they're still performing at, at such a high, high level. Um, yeah, probably in a lot of pain, but they still were able to, uh, to, to perform as well. Um, and so I, I love that story because it gives me hope. I, I, I'm not a tennis player. I, I play golf, but terribly. And my back is always <laughs> feeling... Oh, no. Yeah. I, I'm averaging at 120, though. So I don't yeah, yeah, right. Be terrible. Yeah. Yeah, don't be terrible at that one. I'm <laughs> averaging at 120. So. Well, I always, see, it's nice because I always just blame my, my back. Oh, yeah, it's, 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 it's my back today. It's not, it's, it's, it's not my technique. It's my back. I can't do it. And, uh, it's too convenient, unfortunately. Um, but, uh, well, yeah. Well, for people that working at home, yeah. you doing this, this, uh, uh, treatments are there any sort of, and you mentioned I, I love that you mentioned like i don't like to see you every time one two or three times is okay and yeah. done, i don't like to see you again what is it that you could give advice to like people like us working from home a majority of the developers here or you know attendees of this conference had that that uh, sedentary lifestyle yeah you know? what, one of the one of the big exercises um or the easiest things i like to sort of say to people is um if you don't have anything to the device or any sort and you buy buy yourself a, an exercise ball <laughs> and and keep it under the desk and I, I, I usually show everyone how to sort of just stretch on the ball and you lie on the ball, on the ball backwards, forwards. Um, and this is a great preventative uh, thing just to keep, keep moving and uh, keep stretching around the ball. Um, if you use the exercise ball well, uh, you can really get some good stretches into your back and, and, and to the sides. And obviously, you know, if you're in pain, stop and just reassess. But, but, for your average person, right, we sat in front of the desk all day. Um, you can change your workstation from standing to sitting, all of that. But you want to be able to stretch in some really nice way. And an exercise ball is great. The other thing, which is a little bit tricky to have, is, is to find a bar at home or at the office and just put your hands up and just hang from the bar, like what children do. Oh. I mean, if you do, if you do things that kids do, um, you watch kids when they're on the playground. They, they have fantastic mobility because they're, they're constantly you know like stretching everything stretching yeah like and the monkey bars. exactly and you don't need to be doing a pull-up or anything like that you just need to hold on to something and just just stretch and dangle um yeah play be playful with it i think it's is a really important aspect of of trying to uh, change the habits of sitting all day is is you've got to have something that's fun and and uh, you look forward to Otherwise, you won't do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think I like what James have said there on the chat box. I guess we have to go to back of the playground, right, James? Right. <laughs> That's actually right. You just got to go, go, go and find. Push the children away. Tell them to go. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and say, "All right, this is my turn." Another, another, another curious thing that I find. You know, I, I know I, a lot of us here who works from home or who are developers is the chair. They yeah. always have to be got the best chair. Is there a difference from a hundred dollar chair? Because this is this is true. I saw yeah. this in Japan. A hundred dollar chair versus um I think it's about two hundred thousand about two thousand dollar chair. Is there really a difference <laughs> between the two? A two thousand dollar chair and a hundred dollar chair. Yeah, that's a really good question actually. And you know I always think I always try and go mid range. <laughs> that's, that's, I know it's it's so like oh that's a that's an obvious answer, right? Very very mm -hmm. sick answer. Is but it's it's true. Like there are some things that are just a little overpriced um, with the technology that's put behind them. But that that something else that's cheaper could also achieve. Um, I absolutely say if if it's if it's a very very cheap chair. Yes, it won't give you the support. Like there are a lot of a lot of things out there that that are just not built for uh, decent support for many hours of sitting. You might as well stand. I mean, you know, just just stand. Don't sit. <laughs> but but it, but you need to 
you do need to find a chair that's got the right um, ergonomics and the right height. And, and I won't get into that because there's a whole science of that. And there's yes, a whole lot yes, of that. And we've already mm -hmm. seen some talks on that. Fantastic talk. Yes. Um, no, but but I, love, I love really the talk that you gave about the posture. When you're, even, even when you're standing, there, there is really a certain level where, where the monitor should be, even if you're using a standing desk, right? Yeah, where yeah, your yeah. head should be, should be on, on a level wherein it is really balanced. Yeah, and, and ultimately, like I, I did sort of mention that, you know, um, if you think you're getting the, the posture wrong, just keep, keep changing it. As, and, and the more you kind of move about in your day, you'll be okay because, because it's not prolonged repetitive strain. That's, that's one of the key aspects of, uh, of what I want to hit home. Is, uh, is, uh, yeah, I, I've had people come in that have terrible posture, really bad. And it's like, I've got, I haven't got great posture either. And I think, gosh, they're, they've come in with like finger pain. <laughs> it's just, like their mouse has just been using for too long. And I thought, gosh, well, there's not much going on there, but mm -hmm. you know, um, <laughs> and then it kind of goes, well, it's, it's not, everyone's got to, you're going to have pain if you have that wrong posture. So, um, yeah, yeah moving. That's uh, take I mean, it, it is really, it's really, uh, eye opener. The talk that you have is really eye opener for everybody. I mean, uh, we really appreciate it. Doc oh, my uh, pleasure. Yeah. Uh, James, I, do you, do you have anything, James, you'd like to ask Doc or, uh, Albert? Oh, um, actually, but I have a personal question though. Can, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Can. So it's a, my personal question uh, because, uh, you know, I got a friend who is very tall. Mm -hmm. And, you know, tall people have the tendency to have a bad posture because, you know, yeah, other, yeah. Friends, other friends uh, are shorter than them. Do you have any way to prevent that? Or it's, it's a really, sorry, yeah, it's a really difficult one because tall, tall people also... It, it, it is so interesting because it also depends on what culture you're in and what country. Right, right, I've got, right. I've got I've got very tall Thai friends, for example, and you're in a culture where everyone's a bit shorter, and I'm not particularly that tall. And so, for years, you kind of you know you tend to see you don't want to sort of stand up too tall. Right, and I've, I've, right. It's been something I've noticed also amongst uh, you know uh, different different groups of people. It doesn't matter where you are. If you're just the tall friend, you also don't want to stand out particularly. <laughs> um, and so it's, I, I think with with. And, and with height, you know, everything is a little bit lower down as well. It's, it's quite it's quite difficult without you know walking into things. Um, it's a it's a tough one. You, you either move to a taller country. <laughs> <laughs> what if they don't have the money? Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> but it's it's one of these uh, it's funny things, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. How, how do you how do you deal with that? I, I think um, you know always always try and work on the eye level, like. Uh, and so, so try and look in the distance is is is, is something that, that that a taller person can strive for. So monitors, obviously, um, when you build your first house, let's say, make sure that the the plumber and the engineer and the builder isn't tiny because when they then they install everything, it's like really low down. This is oh, something I've noticed in, in Asia too. Why is my sink really low? Oh, right. you see the plumber and he's tiny. <laughs> he's put the sink in. You know. It's small detail you have to be very quick with, um, depending where you live as well. So everything should be a bit higher, a bit taller. Oh, yeah. um, so make sure make sure you you are aware of where yeah, aware. awareness is really yeah. important, and then give that advice to 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 the person mm -hmm. helping you, whatever. <laughs> so. <laughs> Thank you so much, James. Yeah. Thank you so. Thank How about you. Albert? You. Albert, do you have any question before uh, we have the uh, parting words for Doctor Ben? No, I think I learned a lot from, from the discussion. I personally am a fan of ergonomics. Uh, before the pandemic, like I'm experiencing a lot of back pain, but when I invested to like an ergonomic chair and a standing desk and some like mobile uh, adjustable monitor um, support system, so that really made a lot of difference. And I'm really excited that people are talking more about how, how we do our work in, in a work from home setup. So yeah, thank you so much for the discussion. Great. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank, thank you so you, much. Robert. Any any parting words before we uh, finish up? Um, keep moving. <laughs> <laughs> keep dancing. All right. So so you know where where to find Doctor Ben in Chiang Mai. So his uh, practice is there. If you got any posture problem, pain problem, 
just hit him up, okay? So you can uh, find and follow Dr. Ben on his profile uh, and uh, search for Chiang Mai Osteopathy Clinic, right? That's absolutely right. right. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Have a great morning. And, uh, we'll see you again. Bye for now. See you again. Bye.